So we have a lot to discuss in regards about hygiene and how important hygiene is to the care of our clients, both caring for them and making sure that we are also taking care of ourselves because we ourselves need to be hygienically clean to be able to provide great care to our clients. So let's talk about some definitions. Hygiene is what? It's the practice used to keep bodies clean and healthy. And we have to make sure that we keep our clients, our patients, even ourselves clean and healthy. And within hygiene is grooming, basic grooming, okay? We, it is the practice to care for oneself, such as caring for fingernails and hair. And what we are doing also is we're also providing ADLs to clients, which is also known as activities of daily living, which are those personal daily care tasks such as bathing, dressing, caring for teeth and hair, eating, transferring, drinking, toileting, and also walking. And within grooming and hygiene, we also have perineal care, which is the care for the genitals and the anal area. So let's talk about the assisting with personal care. When we're assisting somebody with their personal care, we need to help the client or the patient be as independent as possible. We need to be able to be aware of what their preference are. What are their basic routines? You know, do they typically wake up early or are they one of those late shiners where they wake up after 10? We need to be able to cons be considerate about what we do and what we do for them at the care of their home. We always want to make sure we provide privacy. Privacy is very important. Observe the client during care because we need to be able to report any signs and symptoms, report any changes. We need to make sure we observe those mental state of the patients. And also, after we provide care, after what we do, we need to leave the client's room neat and clean. And always think about, you know, when you're performing the tasks, are you only doing half the job? So what do you really think? You know, what are you doing? Just by providing ADLs, is that the only thing that you're doing? No, what you're doing here is you're accomplishing is that you're creating a bond, a rapport with the client. So other than just providing personal care, you're also having that bond, creating that trust. Also assuring that client that them being at home is a great thing because this is what they want. They want to stay longer at their homes. They don't want to be in a long-term care facility or a nursing home or even in a hospital. And what we're doing here by providing them care at home is we're helping them stay longer and feel better by being at home. Now, while providing personal care, you can obtain information about your client through asking questions. And by you asking questions and making observations, using all your senses from your sight to your, you know, your hearing to even your smell, you're going to be able to do an assessment on how the client is doing and how they're going and if there's any changes within them. So as that home health aide or homemaker or caregiver, you should build relationships with the clients, not just with the clients, but also with their family members and within all the circle of trust around that particular person. And to be able to build a relationship, we have to have respect and trust. And before we can have respect and trust, we need to be able to show that we're willing to listen. We have to be empathetic. We have to be patient. We have to be able to make sure we encourage independence. We give them praise on when it's something is due. And we need to be able to show that we are involved in their care. Additional terms we should learn it is, is when we're giving actually assistance in grooming and in bathing is the term axillae, which is the underarms, the perineum, genital, and anal area. Shower chair is normally a shower chair is made out of either a sturdy um, PVC pipe chair that we typically place in the bathtub or the shower. Also, we might care for clients with an ostomy. So it may it is a surgically created opening from an area inside the body that is all the way to the outside. So typical ostomies that you might find is a colostomy. So pretty much the client. Um, their, their feces comes out of that ostomy and into a bag that has to capture it. And so there are clients where it's unfortunate, unfortunate that we actually care for them that has ostomy. But with a person with an ostomy, we need to make sure that we provide them some, you know, some level of comfort. We need to be able to give them, you know, that feeling that, it's nothing wrong having one of those things, having an ostomy. It's, it's not different from you caring for them whether they have it or they don't. They're still a human being. 
In addition, we need to know what the groin is, which is that area from the pubis area all the way up to the upper thighs. So let's talk about some of the guidelines in regards for bathing. So baths are for health and relaxation. Those complete baths are only necessary every other day or even less frequently. And for the elderly, only one to two times a week. Now, why is that? Well, as we get older, you know, we don't sweat so much. So then at the same time, as we can actually limit the amount of baths. But you still want to make sure you have at least a minimum of two baths a week. And the reason for that is pretty much sanitary conditions. We want to be able to get rid of any germs or any viruses or any, you know, microorganisms that's staying in our, you know, in our skin area. So your face, your hands, your axilla, and perineum should always be washed every day. You want to be able to keep everything in room temperature to, to be able to create that maximum comfort level. Now, additional safety rules we need to be able to know when we're giving a bath or when we're assisting with a bath on someone is to make sure that we are familiar with the assisted devices. You know, are we using a shower chair? Are we using any shower lifts? Whatever we're doing and whatever we're using, we need to be familiar with this. You know, be mindful of those loose rugs. And actually, if you probably go to a lot of senior um, homes, you'll see those rugs that they, they put in the bathroom. Um, you want to be able to try to convince the client that that shouldn't be there because that is actually a fall risk because they can either trip and fall because of those things. So you would want to be able to stay away from having loose rugs, especially in the bathroom. Just like a child, or never ever leave the client alone in the bathroom or always be there available where they can call you. Never ever use bath oils because that can get slippery. Wear gloves if it is you know, your agency's policy, if it's your company's policy that you're giving a bath, that you have to wear gloves. But if you're performing perineal care, make sure you are wearing gloves to be able to avoid any contact with broken skin, especially if it's present. Now, also understand, be familiar on how to use transfer belts, how to use the tub chairs, the shower chairs, the bath bench, if you have those. Make sure that there are safety bars and grab bars that are available if it is required by the client. Now, what's going to happen is make sure that if you're transferring a client to a wheelchair or from a wheelchair, make sure that you lock the wheels of the wheelchair. Never ever do a transfer if the wheels are not locked. If a transfer belt is needed, make sure that is used. If there's a grab bar, make sure that they know how to be able to transfer themselves by using those things. If there's additional difficulty, if the need for use of a slide board is required, use those as well. Now, talking about transfer to the bathtub, you know, you may have to adapt this procedure to work with your clients. Things can change, depends on the ability of the client that you're working with. So let's say, for example, you're doing this, you need to be able to have possibly a chair, the transfer belt if needed, you know, a shirt or robe to wear under the transfer belt because you don't want to have that friction of the belt directly in the skin. You know, a slide board, especially if it's necess necessary for that, tub or shower chair, bath supplies, and so forth. So always make sure any procedures you start, just like any procedures outside the bathroom, you always want to wash your hands. You always want to explain the procedure. And then you want to be able to assist the client to the bathroom as safely as possible. Remember, providing safety is one of the most things. Seat the client in a chair facing the bathtub and centered between the grab bars if using a wheelchair. Make sure you lock those brakes. Okay, I'm going to say that again. If you're using wheelchairs, every time you're going to do a transfer, always make sure you lock those brakes. Then you ask the client to place one leg at a time over the sides of the tub. Have the client hold on to those grab bars, and that's what it is very important to have those grab bars or, or the edge of a tub to bring himself to a sitting position on the edge of the tub. Now, a slide board, as you look in the photo, can be used as well to make things easier. So that slide board may also be used to help the client move from chair to the tub. You want to then help the client lower himself into the tub or onto a tub chair or a bath bench if whichever is available. Now, as they are holding onto the edge of the tub and grab bars, if necessary, assist by holding him around the waist or by having him wear a transfer belt. If using a transfer belt to get in and out of the tub, the client needs to be wearing that shirt, okay, while they're transferring or a robe. What happens is, is this prevents, once again, shearing and rubbing, okay? When the client is in the tub, you want to be able to place the supplies within easy reach for the client. You want to be able to reverse this procedure to help the client out of the tub. And after any procedure, always wash your hands. And, of course, document as necessary and as required by your agency. 
Remember, privacy is important for your clients. It's extremely important and should be part of your job, especially if the client is going to be taking a bath. Now, let's talk about some assistance for bathing. As you view the following procedure, you have to make sure that you have rubber baths, you have a tub or shower chair, non-skid bath rug, non-skid shoes or slippers for the client, okay? So this is when we're helping a client to take a shower, okay? So always wash your hands, always explain the procedures, always make sure the tub is clean, you know, or the shower is clean, whatever they are using. Always make sure there's that rubber mat on the tub. You know, these are the things that prevents people from possibly slipping, okay? Make sure you provide the privacy. You know, if you're using the tub, make sure you you know, fill the tub halfway warm water, adjust it as needed for the temperature. If you're going to be using the shower, for example, make sure the, you know, the, the water that's coming out is not too hot, not too cold. Be mindful about the possibility of any injuries. Of course, just after any procedure that happens, always wash your hands and always then put on brand new gloves. So you know, before you put any gloves, you always have to wash your hands, okay? Then you want to be able to ask the client to undress, assist them as needed, okay? Now, depending on what the care plan allows, you know, then it's going to let you know if it's going to allow you the patient to be left by themselves or they cannot be left by themselves, okay? Never ever lock the bathroom door where you can't get in immediately if there's any emergencies, okay? Now, always provide that privacy. It's very important. Remember, if they're taking a shower, stay with the client and assist with washing hard-to-reach areas if they need help. If the client needs more assistance in the bath or the shower, help him wash himself. Always assist the client with shampooing their hair if necessary. Now, when it's all over, you want to be able to get him out as safely as possible. Always making sure that you actually, you know, have those grab bars, have those transfer chairs, make sure those, those non-skid mats are very important. We need to be thinking about safety for the client. Okay, now the client may be needing assistance later on to put the odor in, to put some powder on, to put lotion in their body. If they need the help for that and they ask for it, go ahead and give it to them. All unless really you can't they can't do things for themselves that you have to do it for them. Always encourage the client to be able to do self-care as much as possible. After everything is done, you know, you want to be able to clean the room, get rid of any soil, you know linen or laundry materials on the floor make sure that is cleaned and washed okay you put that in the hamper you then take off your gloves of course and then you wash your hands after your any supplies that you took out please make sure you tidy up and put it back in wherever it needs to go and then of course document the procedures as necessary now why is checking the temperature of bathing water have you know and having the client check the temperature is so important the reason for that is the clients sometimes their senses are not as good no more and so we want to be able to prevent any injuries or any scalding for the client remember all bathing supplies as well as your signal device to call you if necessary within the client's reach so if the client is going to be left alone in the in the room or in the bathroom make sure they're given ample you know time and privacy make sure they're easily able to access all the supplies that they need if there is a call device that's required, make sure that's within reach of the client. So if they need to get a hold of you, they can actually just press the button and you know that you can enter the room. So moving on, let's talk additional stuff in regards for bathing. So this is what we're going to do when we're actually going to be providing a complete bed bath. A complete bed bath is being given to clients who most of the time is not able to move on their own. So that's why it's called a complete bed bath. We're providing pretty much a full bath, but in the client's bed, okay? So these are just the basic procedures that you guys need to know. We're going to jump into the following uh, right away. Always make sure in the beginning you wear your gloves, you wash your hands before, allow privacy, and always make sure that you explain what you're going to be doing. Okay, so these are step four, five, and six. If the bed is adjustable, adjust the bed to a safe working level within your waist high. It makes it easier for you to reach things and prevent you from actually having, you know, an injury to your back. Okay, make sure if you are doing any bending, make sure you bend with your knees and you don't lift, with, and you lift with your knees and not your back. Okay, you want to be able to get rid of any jewelry. Okay, if before the bed bath starts, offer them a bed pan or urinal. Okay. You want to be able to place a soft cotton blanket or large towel over the client. You want you don't want them to get cold, okay? Remember, you're going to be doing something, 
you know, for the client, but you still want to provide privacy and the cloth or the blanket is going to be able to provide that. You want to be able to fill the basin with warm water. Remember, always test the water. Make sure it's in, you know, within a good temperature where it's not scalding for the client or it's not too cold. When you start the shower or the bath, the bed bath, make sure you put on gloves. Try to get the client to participate as much as they can. Be able to give them the washcloth or whatever they need to do. You want to be able to do one part of the body at a time, and that's why you have that towel on top of them to be able to do that. Now, you need to be able to wash, rinse, and dry one part of the body at a time. You always want to start off the head and then work all the way down, okay? So you always want to stop, start, start with the head all the way down, okay? So eyes, face, ears, and neck is first. Then you're going to do with the arms and the axillae. Then they're going to do the hands, then the chest, the abdomen, the legs and the feet, and then as you keep on going down. So lastly, you're going to take care of the back portion, okay? And then towards the last part of the, the, the whole bed bath is the perineal area and the buttocks area. Now, for female clients, it's a couple different things, so make sure you read this part. You can pause it while you're reading this if you need to. Now this part is for the male client now. These are additional things that you would have to do for them. Remember when everything is over, you want to keep the client covered. You want to be able to place soiled washcloths and towels in a hamper or laundry basket. You want to be able to dispose of the bath water in the toilet. You want to be able to wash your hands after that, and if it permits, a bed bath is a good time to give a client a back rub if it is needed, okay? If you need to provide them with lotion, with the deodorant, you can do that as we speak. And after any procedure is done, make sure you wash your hands, okay? And then document as necessary. Okay, we're moving on to perineal care now, okay? So with perineal care, let's go back here really fast. You must change bath water and put on fresh gloves before performing any perineal care. Perineal care is considered a procedure and should be done as a step-by-step -step technique, okay? That is different for males and as well as different for females. Be sure to turn the client on his or her side and to clean the anal area to complete the procedure. Keep body parts covered with towels and bath blanket for privacy and as well as warmth. Remember other grooming procedures such as nail care, shampooing, the hair, and back rubs are often done at the time of the bath. As you view the following procedure for shampooing hair, keep these points on mind. Shower techniques is easiest. Shampooing in bed is the most difficult. There's special equipment such as a throff can help make the procedure more comfortable for the client and easier for uh, the aid. Now, points to remember about shampooing hair. Another type of shampooing in bed involves placing a plastic garbage bag then a towel over the pillow before wetting the head with a wet washcloth. There's that small amount of shampoo will then be applied and then slowly worked into the hair. That shampoo is then removed by several applications of what we call a wet washcloth that has been wrung out before it is applied. Water will be changed as needed. Now, a tiny amount of white vinegar can be added to that last rinse of water as it can help clear away any shampoo residue. Now, this is just one additional method of shampooing here in bed. You need to understand that methods that is used by your agency. So, is, if there is a particular way that your agency wants to do the shampooing, then you want to be able to ask them and see what the procedures that they want you to do, okay? Remember, grooming affects the way people feel about themselves. If they feel clean, they always will feel better. So the, if they feel clean, okay, they can also feel so much better. And we need to understand that. Now, when we're assisting clients with grooming, always let them do all they can for themselves. Let them make as many choices as possible. Now, there are going to be some of those clients that may be embarrassed, may be depressed or anxious because all of a sudden now somebody's having to help them. Previously, they did everything for themselves. You want to become professional and respectful for the client when you're helping them, when, especially when you're helping them with grooming, especially when you're helping them with their bathing. Your attitude can help your clients maintain self-respect and feel good about themselves. How you treat them 
can determine how they can also feel about themselves, especially with the procedures that now they're actually needing help with. When we're providing fingernail care, you want to be able to understand and remember that hands and nails should be kept clean at all times. Remember, your hands are literally some of the you know, dirtiest things ever. And so we have a lot of microbes there, and especially our hands is the transport area for a lot of things that actually goes into our body when we're actually eating something. And so we want to make sure that our hands and our nails they are always clean and kept clean always. Nail care should be provided whenever nails are dirty or jagged and when assigned. Understand, though, that if the patient is diabetic, then the nurse or a podiatrist must be the one that provides nail care for that particular client. Never the home health aide, never the caregiver, the homemaker. When providing foot care, once again, never cut the toenails, okay? Never, ever cut the toenails. This could lead to infection or wounds, so this is a no-no for you guys, okay? When providing the foot care, it's important to observe the feet and report any of the following. Are there any dry, flaking skin? Is it not intact, or are there any broken skins or any cuts or bruises on there? Are there any blisters? Are there any weird discolorations? Are there any blood or drainage? Are there any, you know, those long, ragged toenails? Are there, are there any ingrown nails? You know, is there any differences between the temperatures of the feet? Is it one side colder than the other? And why is that important? It's because maybe one side is having problems more with circulation compared to the other. Now, when we're shaving the client, we want to be able to keep the following things in mind. We always want to wear gloves for shaving. Safety razors must be sharp, okay? You don't want to use dull razors. Beard must be softened with warm water before you start cutting or you start shaving. You want to be able to make sure you lather the face with shaving cream or soap and warm water before beginning. Would you ever start shaving your legs or your face if you did not wet or moist it yet? And if you won't do that, then you can definitely understand that this is something that you wouldn't want done to another person. Always think about the care that you're providing as a care that you're going to provide yourself or your loved one. If you would not do it to yourself, then I would say you would not want to do it to others. If you are using an electric razor, do not use it near any water source when oxygen is in use or if client has a pacemaker. When you're combing or brushing your hair, keep these points in mind. Always handle the hair gently. Tangles are common. They are going to happen. So there are those special products that may make it easier to remove baby tangles. You want to be able to brush in two inch sections from their roots all the way to the end and also report any signs of lice immediately. All right, let's talk about referring to these following terms when we're actually working on affected sides. Affected, weaker, involved, okay? So never refer to the weaker side as the bad side or talk about the bad leg or the bad arm, okay? It's just the weak side. It's the affected side, but it's never the bad side. When you are assisting with dressing or undressing a client, you want to keep these following things in mind. Follow their preferences. Allow the client to choose the clothing. That's them being a little still a little independent or being able to assist in their self-care by them being able to choose what clothes they want to wear. The client should always dress in regular clothes in the daytime and then at the same time as when they're going to sleep, whatever they're comfortable using. If they're a typical, I want to wear just some gym shorts and a shirt, then let them be that way if that's always how they've been. But if they like to put on, you know, pretty much a sleepwear, then make sure that's provided to them as well. The client should do self-care as much as possible and be able to be given the choice to do and wear what they want. Additional things we should think about is making sure we provide privacy. Always roll the socks and stockings to put on easier. Fasten bras in front first. Place weaker arm or leg through garment first. And always use adaptive devices as necessary. Here are additional terms. Oral care, which is the care of the mouth, teeth, and the gums. Dental floss is a special kind of string used to clean between teeth. They're a waxed type of a string. Aspiration is the inhalation of foods, fluids, or foreign materials into the lungs, and this can sometimes cause pneumonia. Now, dentures, on the other hand, are those artificial teeth. We, able, we need to be able to remember and observe the mouth for the following during oral care. Are there any irritation, any infection, any raised areas? Are there any coated or swollen tongue? Are there any ulcers or any flaky white spots? 
We need to look for any dry, cracked, bleeding, or chapped lips, loose, chipped, broken, or decayed teeth. Are there any swollen, irritated, bleeding, or whitish gums? We need to be able to pay attention to bad breath or a fruity breath, or as well as any pain in the mouth. Okay, when we're providing the oral care, make sure you use a towel or have a to towel handy all the time. Remove the dentures or dental bridge work. Then you want to be able to start by cleaning the tongue, all surfaces of the teeth, and then also the gum line. Okay, when we're providing care for an unconscious okay, client, we want to be able to understand and still explain the procedures to them. Even though we feel that they're not listening or they're just unconscious and passed out, or they don't respond to any stimuli, we still need to explain the procedures, okay? Now remember, if somebody is unconscious, if they're in the bed and we're providing oral care, there is always a high risk for that aspiration where they're going to end up having anything, any fluids go into their lungs automatically. It may cause some pneumonia. So you want to be able to turn a client's head or body to the side and use as little liquid as possible. When flossing the teeth, remember the, these, these following things. Procedure starts from the back of the teeth, then to the front. Never start in the front, then to the back, okay? You want to offer water for rinsing the mouth when finished. You want to be able to flush locations that should be changed every two teeth, okay? Now, when cleaning and storing dentures, remember these points. Dentures are expensive, and if they break, the client are not going to be able to eat. So be careful with it. Allow privacy and let them do it for themselves if it's possible. If they can clean it themselves, let them do it. Or there are a lot of other things out there that we can use now to clean dentures. You want to be able to carry the dentures in a cup, not in the hand. Do not use hot water to clean or store dentures because that could warp them. And also return dentures, dentures to the client after cleaning them if the client wants to continue wearing them. When reinserting dentures, we need to understand and remember the importance of using a denture cup and providing privacy for the client. Moving on now to prostheses or prosthetic devices. Prosthesis is a device that replaces a body part that is missing or deformed because of an accident, injury, illness, or even a birth defect. You want to be able to know the following types of devices such as artificial limbs, such as artificial hands, arms, feet, and legs that are made to resemble the body part that they are replacing. We're starting to see a lot more clients now with a lot of 3D printed hands, which is pretty cool looking. You can look them up at YouTube and look at you know 3D printed artificial limbs. Also, there's artificial breasts. These are made of a lightweight, soft, spongy material, usually fits into a regular bra or in the pocket of a special bra called a mastectomy bra. Okay, so this is typically to be able to uh, give it's given to a lot of clients that has or had a mastectomy and what it is it brings them the ability to be able to have normalcy now there's also a hearing aid which is another prosthetic device if you didn't know that so a hearing aid is that battery operated device that is placed inside your ear canal that amplifies the sound for a person that has a hearing loss Many elderly clients have hearing aids nowadays, or you may face a client that has a cochlear implant, which is this little also thing that goes into the ears but has a magnetic um, thing that actually magnetizes to something in the back of the head. There's also what we call artificial eyes, or also known as an ocular prosthetic. It replaces an eye that has been lost to disease or injury, usually made of a plastic, but they also have them in glass usually needing a suction cup to be able to remove it and to put it back into place. Uh, that ocular device or the ocular prosthetic does not provide vision. It can, however, improve appearance of the patient or the client. Then, of course, dentures. It's a prosthetic device, also known as artificial teeth. They may be necessary when a tooth or teeth have been damaged, lost, or must be removed. A lot of elderly nowadays have, or even clients, have dentures. So when we're working with prosthetic devices, we want to be able to make sure we handle them with care. We want to follow the instructions for applying and removing them. We want to be able to keep the prosthesis and the skin clear and dry. If it's an artificial limb, make sure we apply a stump sock if it's ordered or required. Always look at the skin for signs of any breakdown. Never try to fix a prosthesis by yourself. Always allow the manufacturer to do that or a manufacturer approved um, maintenance person. Do not show any negative feelings about prosthesis. Follow the manufacturer's instruction for cleaning them. 
and do not put artificial eyes in alcohol because remember you're going to be putting that into your eye socket all right moving on guides for assisting with toileting you have a fracture pan fracture pan is a bed pan that is flatter than the regular bed pan and this is given to somebody who has had a hip fracture or a fracture to prevent them from overextending themselves the bedpan, on the other hand, is that piece of equipment used for urination and bowel movements while they are in bed. A urinal is that piece of equipment used for urination by males. There's a handheld, handheld urinal device, or you may put a full urinal section or seating next to the bed where they can get up easily and urinate there. Also known as a portable bedside commode. So that's that chair, the bedside, okay, that has a removal container underneath if they have or they've used it. So let's talk about some assisting points that we need to know when we're toileting. The toilets can be fitted with raised seats to make it easier for clients to get up and down. So if you ever gone to a bathroom and you look at the handicap section uh, or the handicap you know, bath area, you're gonna see that the toilet is actually raised higher. To make sure that there's handrails that's available so that is you know, is there to be able to help the client in case that they need it. We want to be able to observe and report if these assistive devices are needed but not present. Also remember when clients need assistance to get to the bathroom or use the commode, offer to help often. This can avoid accidents and embarrassment. We need to explain guidelines for assisting with the toileting. When assisting a client with a use of a bedpan, we want to keep in mind that, you know, you want to be able to have the bedpan warmed up a little bit and not have it cold, okay? And dust the top with talcum powder before offering it to a client. Talcum powder or, you know, just like a Johnson's & Johnson's baby powder assists with being able to slide it easier under the client. Make sure that when we're providing the bedpan, we provide privacy, protect the bed from soiling. There are two techniques, client raising the hips and client rolling over the side. You want to be able to remove and discard gloves and wash hands before leaving the room. Upon return, put on clean gloves. We want to be able to provide perineal care after everything. We want to discard any soiled toilet paper, gloves, or any wipes. And also make sure, other than we washing our hands, that they should also wash their hands themselves. When you're assisting that male client with a urinal, on the other hand, privacy and cleanliness are important. Remove and discard any gloves and wash hands before leaving the room. Okay, whenever you're returning back, always put on new gloves. You want to be able to rinse the urinal with cold water after use, not warm water, cold water. We want to be able to understand how to position urinal if client is unable. Moving on, on disposing of any body wastes, any urine and feces can carry infection and is also an acidic item. So we want to be able to dispose in toilet without spilling or splashing. You want to be able to wear gloves, okay? You want to be able to wash the containers thoroughly. You want to be able to wash the cloths in very hot water. You want to be able to wash the client's laundry separately as well, if it's soiled. You want to be able to place disposable items in plastic bags first before garbage disposal. So when we're providing hygiene for a client, we want to be able to give them the best care possible. Keeping them clean is very important. Providing care and allowing them to care for themselves as much as they can is also very much important. So that pretty much ends this particular section. I hope you guys keep on watching. Remember past cnanow.com. We know we offer over 1,500 tests and quiz questions, over 23 skill videos online. You have your online instructor that provides educational materials such as these. We have a variety of videos that is going to be able to help you guys pass your CNA examination with your state. We also give you guys some free handouts and free job guidance when you guys actually get your CNA exam. So once again, this is Michael here with PassCNAnow.com. Thank you so much and just keep on watching our videos and I guarantee that you will pass your examination.